The G91R3 is the go-to cast plane for all German ground forces players. With its exceptional manoeuvrability and deadly firepower, it certainly lives up to its historical role as a light ground attack aircraft. Alright lads, today I'm going to be talking about the history, performance, weapons and tactics of the G91R3. I want to mention at the beginning of this video that I will be mainly focusing on the role of this plane in ground realistic battles. I will cover her realistic, but where this plane really makes a name for itself is alongside the Leos in ground realistic battles. As always, we'll start with the basics. The G91R3 is a rank 5 battle rating 8.7 ground attack aircraft, located in the German tech tree. This vehicle is not a premium, and anyone can grind it out for free. It is located in the German ground attack research tree, after the Horton 229. To unlock the R3, you'll first need to grind out 99,000 RP, and purchase the vehicle for a price of 390,000 silver lions. After this, you will have an additional crew train price of 110,000 silver lions, for a combined price of 500,000 SL. It will set you back an additional 390,000 silver lions for an expert qualification and an additional 1,800 golden eagles for the ace qualification. As this is a tech tree vehicle, you only get a 402% RP modifier as well as a 345% silver line modifier. These modifiers certainly do leave a lot to be desired, especially the silver line modifier. I personally bought a talisman for this plane, which will increase your RP modifier to 606%. If you would like to know more about this plane and how to cause havoc in ground realistic battles, then stick around for the rest of the video. The story of the G91 originates at the end of the Korean War. Leading NATO members recognise the need to re-equip their air forces with suitable jet-powered ground attack aircraft. In December 1953, NATO's Supreme Command issued specifications for a new light tactical support aircraft, and several European companies were invited to submit their designs. The competition was intended to produce an aircraft that was light, small, expendable, and equipped with basic weapons and avionics, capable of operating with minimal ground support. These specifications were developed for two reasons. The first was the new a threat to larger air bases. Many cheaper aircraft could be better dispersed, and the other was to counter the trend towards larger and more expensive aircraft. The specified technical requirements included the capability to operate from semi prepared grass air strips and roads, a maximum speed of Mach 0.95, a range of 280 km with a 10 minute loiter time on target, presence of armoured protection for the pilot, as well as alternative arrangements of 450 cal machine guns, or 2x20 or 2x30mm auto cannons. The challenge of providing an engine that matched the requirements of lightness and power reliability and ease of maintenance was solved by using the Bristol Sidley Orpheus. This was a turbojet engine then in development in the UK. Nine of the ten designs to be submitted to the competition were powered by the Orpheus engine, including the Fiat G91. In order to evaluate the ten designs, a special advisory group for the aeronautical research and development conducted extensive evaluations for over 18 months. At the end of the trials, three planes were selected for further testing, with the G91 being highlighted as the plane with the most promise, and subsequently an order for 27 pre-production jets was placed. At this point, the design was still a concept, and Fiat quickly began modifying the design to be fit for actual flight trials. The design was continually refined until the main NATO testing in 1957, and in the following year in 1958, the G91 was declared the winner of the overall competition. The G91 that we have in the German tech tree is the R3 variant. This was a special design for the Luftwaffe, with the main difference being the two 30mm cannons, instead of the conventional four 50 cal machine guns. The West German Air Force began receiving the G91 R3s in 1960, and by 1970 they had around 310 aircraft in service. In the Luftwaffe, they had quite a poor reputation for performance, with several aircraft having the emblems of pig placed on them, interpreted as a comment on the plane's poor engine power when carrying a full weapons load. The Cold War was ripe in technological innovation, especially in the aeronautical field. Due to the emergence of more powerful and capable designs, all of the G91 R3s in German service were retired by 1982. While the R3 variant of the G91 never saw active combat, other variants did, with a notable example being the extensive use of G91 R4s with the Portuguese Air Force in the Portuguese colonial wars. The G91 was adopted by the Germans, Italians, Portuguese and the Greeks, with the last operational G91 being withdrawn from service with the Italian Air Force in 1995. This meant that the G91, in all of its variants, had around 35 years of service life. As I mentioned, the G91 R3 is powered by the British Bristol Orpheus engine,
producing 2,190 kilograms of thrust. The engine power allows the G91 to reach a top speed of 1,084 kilometers per hour at sea level. However, it will take you a considerable amount of time to reach that speed. Acceleration between 350 to 750 kilometers per hour is pretty good, but above and below that speed, acceleration is rather average. This means it takes quite a long time to recover from any sort of stalling maneuver, so you should only ever get slow when having a one versus one. Another issue caused by the relatively low engine power is incredibly poor energy retention, both in turns and in climbs. It means that you lose energy very quickly when performing any sort of defensive flying, giving you a similar problem to the French Super Mystia. And in climbs, the low weight of the plane means that you cannot retain speed from a dive to regain altitude. An example of how this poor energy retention is a serious hindrance in game is trying to evade a plane such as a MiG-15. You will have to roll and turn to deny him a shot at you, and the MiG can then just go into a climb. And because you were forced to manoeuvre and bled all your speed, you will be unable to follow him back into a climb. This makes it incredibly difficult to compete against a MiG pilot who knows how to manage his energy, as there is very little you can do if he repeatedly boom and zooms you. The G91 is pretty good at turning when you have energy, but due to the aforementioned poor energy retention, extended turns will bleed all of your energy, making you a sitting duck. Where the G91 R3 excels is its roll rate and elevator authority. You can roll and pull sharp brief turns to throw off an enemy's aim, and try and get him to overshoot. While this is effective against enemies who fully commit to a dogfight, as I mentioned, an enemy who knows how to boom and zoom you, as well as manage his energy, can very easily get you into an energy trap. The G91 shortcomings are not as apparent in ground realistic battles, as you start with an earth spawn, and the great roll rate and elevator authority allows you to pull out of dives after an attack run. But the additional weight from the ground attack weapons mean that the poor engine performance is only made worse. So don't get slow if you know there's an enemy jet up. No matter the game mode, the G91 has access to a parachute, which allows you to speed up the process of repairing and rearming, something which is incredibly useful for ground realistic battles. Overall, the G91's performance is certainly not on par with the other 8.7 jets. Planes such as the MiG-15 Bis and Swift F7 can just simply outpower you, and as long as they maintain their speed and energy, you are completely unable to touch them. The G91 is a great support plane, and it heavily relies on its teammates to make sure its 6 is clear. It is very good on one on one dogfights, but as soon as you are fighting multiple enemies, you end up bleeding too much speed to trying to evade each enemy. While the G91 R3 has some pretty serious weaknesses, it is far from unusable. If you can isolate an enemy and fight them one on one, it is certainly one of the best high tier dogfighters. The primary weapons of the G91 R3 are the two DEFA cannons located in the nose of the plane. You have 250 rounds in total, with 125 rounds per gun. This is a rather limited ammunition supply, especially considering the DEFA cannons have a fire rate of 1,200 rounds per minute. Luckily for us, the DEFAs are incredibly effective against both planes and ground targets. The air target belts are incredibly destructive, only needing a few hits to obliterate anything you will face. The ground target belts are also a pretty good backup in ground realistic battles, as they contain an armour piercing round which has 47mm of penetration. This is perfect for punching right through the roofs of most lightly armoured tanks. It should be noted, however, that the effective range of the DEFA cannons are essentially anything below 0.8km. After this range, the rounds lose velocity very quickly, and it becomes nearly impossible to hit a target taking evasive actions. Apart from the poor long range effectiveness of the DEFAs, they are probably the joint best guns in War Thunder, along with the British Aidens. As well as the cannons, the R3 can carry several different weapon systems, the first of which are dumb bombs. You can carry either four 250-pound bombs or two 500-pound bombs. There's nothing special about these, just regular old bombs. The bombs drop two at a time, so you'll have two salvos of 250 pound bombs on one salvo of 500 pound bombs. I personally would probably take out the four 250 pound bombs in GRB if you really wanted to use the bombs. The 250 pound bombs have a 4 meter destruction radius, whereas the 500 pound bombs only have a 5 meter destruction radius. I'd argue it's better to have two salvos of 250 pound bombs rather than only one salvo of 500 pound bombs. The extra 1 meter of destruction radius is pretty much irrelevant, you'll need to be pinpoint accurate with both sets of bombs. The R3 can also carry SNEB rockets, you can carry 38 rockets in total across 2 pods. The SNEBs have a penetration of 300mm which is very good, but they are let down with their rather low explosive payload of 903 grams of TNT equivalent. This makes it rather lacklustre unless you hit an ammo rack. The rockets are also located on the outer pylons of the wings, which make them quite hard to aim. But the real meat and potatoes of this plane is its ability to carry four AS Nord Urza ground missiles. The Nords carry an explosive warhead consisting of 29.9kg of TNT and has 83mm of penetration at all angles. 
This means if you hit the side or the top of a tank, it will destroy it in one shot 99% of the time. These missiles are incredibly potent in ground realistic battles, not only due to the great performance of the missiles, but also down to the manoeuvrability of the R3 itself. While you can only carry four of these missiles, it is pretty much four confirmed kills once you have your aiming down. Overall, the weapons the G91 R3 gets access to are incredibly good for a ground attack aircraft. There is a weapon system for all skill levels. Bombs can be used by beginners, the SNEBs can be used for intermediate pilots, and the Nords can be used for more experienced players. The only downside of this plane is a lack of any air to air missiles, which would redeem the somewhat lacking performance in air realistic. But nevertheless, the Defa cannons give it a decent fighting chance in air realistic, while the other weapon systems allow this plane to be a main battle tank's worst nightmare. No matter which game mode you wish to play, I would highly recommend unchecking the booster modification. When you use this modification, if you pull a high G turn when going at speed in the G91, it will easily rip its wings. If you uncheck the booster modification, the plane can no longer turn as hard, and therefore wing rips are incredibly rare. When you spawn into an unrealistic game, I would highly recommend taking only the 9 minutes of minimum fuel. As I mentioned earlier, the additional weight of fuel really affects performance, and most games are over in less than 9 minutes anyway. After taking off, I keep the plane level and fly off to the side a little bit. This allows me to pick up some speed whilst creating separation from the enemy. I mentioned in the performance section that if this plane gets focused by several enemies, there is very little you can do, and this is the reason I fly off to the side at the start of a game. I do not want to be the first player the enemy team sees. Allow your teammates to head into the fur ball and you follow them in 30 seconds later and act as a supporting player. Before I turn back into the fur ball, I usually put the plane into a steady 10 degree climb just to gain some altitude. Remember, the engine power is poor, so anything more than a 15 degree climb will seriously reduce your speed. And surviving in a realistic in the G91 is all about keeping your speed up. When you get into a fight, use your excellent roll rate and elevator authority to make enemies overshoot and then try and get a shot on them as they pass you. It is always best to try and stick around teammates in the G91, as it cannot outrun or out energy most opponents. In ground realistic battles, I would still recommend taking the 9 minutes of fuel, pretty much for the same reasons. You are much more nimble carrying less fuel. Remember that the 30mm cannons have a great armor piercing belt, so if you have been flying this plane in air realistic battles recently, make sure to chain the gun belts over to the ground attack option. I always equip the AS Nords in ground realistic, as I find them to be the most effective way of securing kills in the G91. Seeing as you only have 4 missiles, it could be quite daunting for new players but I believe I have the aiming pretty much figured out. As you have seen in the clips playing in the background, you need to aim ever so slightly lower than where you want to hit. Start an attack run by coming down at an enemy from a fairly steep angle, and try and interpret where they are going to be when the missile hits. This is down to experience and I can't really explain it on a video. What I can say though, is that the AS nods are incredibly consistent. They hardly have any dispersion, meaning every missile acts the same in flight, which makes leading them incredibly easy once you've got accustomed to their flight characteristics. In terms of a lineup in ground RB, you are pretty much spoilt for choice. The R3 being battle rating 8.7, you arguably have the best lineup of any of the top tier tank lines. You have the Leopard L44, KPZ70, Leo A1A1, Big Light Panzer, Tam, M48G2, and the Gepard. The G91 R3 is also still usable in an up tier, however, you will need to be careful around the high end self propelled anti aircraft guns, such as the Tunguska and ADATs. To conclude, I think that the G91R3 is a central part of the German ground forces lineup. It gives the Germans a decent top tier cast aircraft, which is something the Germans were severely lacking in. I think the plane is severely overpowered at the minute. Reducing the Nord loadout from 4 down to 2 would probably be the best way to balance this plane, as an increase in BR would make the plane pretty much useless in an unrealistic battle. The situation is a bit different for a realistic, however. I've made it pretty clear that this plane has many limitations compared to several equally tiered opponents, and I did personally struggle adapting to this plane. I mainly fly MIGs and was used to using energy fighting to get kills rather than reversal tactics. Another negative I found with this plane is that because the plane relies on turning and pulling high Gs to evade enemies, you are pretty much forced into buying the expert qualification at the very least, just in order to be competitive. Without it, you black out every time you try and pull. The expert qualification will cost you an additional 390,000 silver lions, which is a significant amount of money for a non-premium player. Another issue for non-premium players is a G91 3 significant repair cost of 12,193 silver lions, a very high repair cost for a plane that has mediocre performance in aerialistic battles. If you are looking for a good top tier German fighter, then the MiG-15 bit is a better choice in my opinion. The MiG guns are harder to use, but it has better performance, better reward modifiers, and it is the exact same battle rating. I'd say that the G91 R3 is worth grinding out if you're an experienced jet pilot, or if you're a German ground forces player. But for new players looking to get into jet games, the G91 R3 is not what I'd call beginner friendly. As usual, I hope you found this video useful lads, and thank you very much for watching.